So welcome to the July 13th six, uh, meeting of the City Council Rules Select Committee. Uh, and this meeting is being audio, audio and video recorded for all who are joining us. Uh, I'm Chair Mayori, uh, with presiding here with Vice Chair Simon and our other members. Uh, let's see, let's do a, a roll call first. And then put public comment. Councillor Mayori. Here. Member Baskin. Not present. Um, Member Simon. Here. Councillor Dwight. Here. And Councillor Foster. Here. All right. Now, are there, there's any members of the public who would like to give comment? This would be the time to do so. Please raise your hand. There's, it's a small group here, so I only see. Uh, let me see a few people. So just you could raise your physical hand or your or use the feature. Hi, Mimi, would you like to go? <laughs> yeah, hi, how are you? <laughs> um, I, I made it home just in time. Um, so I want I so I want to just talk about this open public comment that ha occurs. Um, I have dealt with the city council when it was not virtual when it was in person. And the way the process worked at that time was you would go in, you'd have to sign up, you know, you'd have to get to the meeting prior to it starting, you'd have time to sign up. They might let it go for you to sign up like till about and 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 Bill, you can correct me if I'm wrong with this, but essentially like you'd maybe get to like seven or seven fifteen, but then the piece of paper would be taken in. And after that point, once public comment started, if you hadn't gotten there to sign up, you just were there might be times, depending on if there weren't a lot of people that the mayor or whoever was running the meeting could say, does anyone else want to speak? But generally you had to get there to speak, sign up by a certain time to be able to speak. And what's happening in these virtual meetings is that the public comment just goes on and on. Like I, I would like to recommend if you're going to continue virtual that there would just be a time limit where after a certain period, you just wouldn't have the public comment. And the reason is because while I know everyone's opinion is important to hear, it's just that as a person who actually wants to see what happens to the city during the city council meetings, you know, I can't stay up till two or three in the morning to, to see the big decisions or the debates that happen. I can barely stay up past 11, um, which is sometimes when you are just getting into the heart of your agendas. And then it's like, the, there's nothing in the paper the next day. And so it's really difficult to try and understand, well, what happened at city council? Like I, you know, I went to bed and I don't know what happened. And, um, and that's just as a constituent. But as a member of city council, I cannot imagine that it's your best thinking, your best your best efforts to be able to um, be going on so late. And so like something has to give. And I, I don't think it's inappropriate to say you have to sign up for, to speak at open public comment by a certain time to be able to participate. Um, or you have to just say, we're gonna end the meeting at a certain time. I just think that it's, these meetings going on as late as they are are not good for the council members. They're not good for the members of the public who actually are citizens who care what's happening and they want to they want to be engaged into watching the debate to know what the conversations are to hear what people are saying. Um, I have to rely on either going back later and watching a recording of it or to read what's covered in the newspaper and it's frustrating. Um, and I also just want to say that um, for the city councilors, I just think it's it's too much to be asking city councilors to be giving that much time so. Those are just my thoughts. I think it's a normal practice in the past. And so I would just hope that, um, you know, th that that could be something that was something adjusted in some way to try and shorten the length of the meetings going on to such a long time without with still allowing people. I mean, you could still get a hundred people who sign up before seven o'clock. I mean, I've been to even ones where people sign up in in-person meetings where public comment can go on a while, but if it's a big issue and everybody wants to speak, but it's just a matter of trying to find a way to be, you know, thoughtful, but at the same time have some sort of rules in place. That's my piece. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is anyone else from the public? Councilor Barge, would, would, did you want to make a comment now and public comment? Maybe you're just listening. All right. So then, well, let's move on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was muted. Did you just call my name? I was asking if anyone else wanted to give public comment. Yes. Oh, I thought you said my name. Well, I, I asked if you wanted to give comment now. Yes, I, I would like to do that. I appreciate right. that. Um, I do know as a city councilor, 
we've had some serious late council meetings, 3.20 a.m., about 2.30 a.m., and whatever. And the open public sessions, I mean, I actually talked with our council president in regards to the many calls that I had received from people in the city and also in Ward 6. I think with our open public sessions that we've had, we've started at seven and not ending to almost 20 minutes of nine. And then counselors asking for a break, which I don't blame them. And we go on all through up until like 1.30 in the morning, quarter to two. It is very, very unhealthy. It's very unhealthy for our residents. A lot of them told me they could not stay up because they had to work in the morning. And we also, all of us counselors, we need to look at our thinking. And nobody can think from seven o'clock until 2.30 or three, three o'clock in the morning, 3.30. It's just totally impossible. By the time that council meeting is over, you're wired. You cannot even get back to bed and it's just not healthy. I think we need to look at our open public sessions that we have. I think we should set a time on that. And I also feel that we should be setting a time of ending our council meetings. I'm just saying how I feel about this because I know being a counselor for quite a long time, I think the longest, longest, the longest of all the years I've been a counselor was like about 1.15 a.m. And that was it. And these were exceptional. I, I just couldn't believe an open public session lasting two and a half to almost to quarter of nine at night. Our responsibility as counselors is that our agenda, our agenda. We have our taxpayers, our renters here who want to listen about the zoning changes. How can they do that at uh, 10 minutes of 12 at night, 11 o'clock? We're having department heads, which I felt really bad for Carolyn Mish. I mean, by the time she started at 11 o'clock, take a look at her, watch the tape. She looked exhausted 10 after one in the morning, she ended. I, I think we need to definitely look at all this and have respect for our department heads also. So I am hoping that we can set a time. And I think we need to look at other cities that have open public sessions. I was today, today I was told Deerfield, 15 minutes, that's what their open public session is. I am gonna do a little research on other towns and cities on how long their open public sessions are. I just think it's valuable and I, I think we need quickly need to make some changes. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councilor Labarge. Okay, are there any other members of the, of the public that would like to speak? Does it look like so? So then next will be the approval of the minutes of June 28th, 2021. The motion. Move approval, please. Second. Okay. Um, are there any corrections or I have one small, um, uh, does anyone else Let's see, make sure I can see everyone. Oh, member Baskin. I do have a correction. Um, I use they, them pronouns rather than he, him pronouns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Make that change. Uh, I will go, uh, the only small thing I, I see is on the last page, it says counselor, and I think you're referring to counselor Dwight, but I just wanted to clarify. It's on um, after your members agreed to meet Tuesday, July 13th, it said in response to a question about the process for setting the agenda. Oh, I see. That's all. Oh, you're right, it was counselor Dwight, okay. thank you all. Sure, okay. and back to where it was, so. Move to a, approve as corrected. Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Well, th those are actually oh. just Scribner's errors, so we oh, don't okay. need to do that. It, it, we're not amending it; we're just we're we're making Scribner's errors. So. Okay. So. Okay. 
All right, then let's see. I'm stuck in my, there we go. I'm having a little um, jagged connection. So Vice Chair Simon, be ready to fill in if I, if I disappear for too long. Uh, let's see. So, so next we have the consideration of the modification of the following council rules. Should I proceed to a roll call? Oh yes, yeah. excuse me, yes, excuse me, yes. Councilor Mayori? Yes. Member Simon? Yes. Member Baskin? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. And Councilor Foster? Yes. Okay, so the, 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 the minutes pass unanimously. So on to consideration of modification of the following council rules. Um, shall we open up discussion? First is rule 4.8 public comment. Let's see, uh, Councillor Foster. Sure. Um, I had a chance to look into a handful of towns and it show, you know, clearly, and as Councillor Labarge mentioned in public comment, I think many of us are aware of, um, our rules around public comment are much more open um, than, than many other cities and towns. And I just, um, to me, it's really important to include the members of the public. And I think that the, what we've seen over Zoom um, in this past year has been really amazing. I think we've seen people able to participate in our meetings who wouldn't be able to get to City Hall at seven o'clock. Um, and I think we've been able to amplify a lot of voices and that's, that's been really great. And I think our work is to um, consider um, how to continue to include those voices while also allowing counselors, as, as Mimi Adres brought up and Councillor um, Labarge, you know, to allow us to do our work at a reasonable hour. And I know that there have been meetings where we've been making big decisions that I have certainly struggled with, with the timing of that and, and, and feeling as though that, that um, it wasn't fair to be asking of any of us um, to be trying to make, you know, decisions that would have huge impact on the city uh, at such a late hour. Um, so I guess I just wanted to, to kick off with that, that, um, you know, that the, the challenge being as I see it, being as inclusive as possible, while also allowing us to get to the, the council business. And some of the other cities and towns I've seen are very restrictive of like having to submit written comment a couple hours before the meeting or, um, you know, signing up um, by a specific time. One, one that I liked um, was that they allowed a certain amount of time for public comment. And then based on how many people had signed up, they sort of um, divided the amount of time available based on how many people had signed up. Um, so that, that one was kind of cool. Um, and then there's, you know, there's, there's just a more straightforward specific time limit. So um, I'm not, I'm not wandering toward a conclusion. I'm just punting there. <laughs> um, let's see. Mem Member Baskin. Yeah, I think that the, um, I, First, I want to apologize for being late. Um, I was running late from work. I emailed Laura, but I don't know whether she got it in time. Um, so I want to apologize for that. Um, but I, I do agree the decisions, important decisions being made at ridiculously late or early in the morning hours, it's not feasible or sustainable. Um, I wonder a couple of things. Um, one, could it be two minutes instead of three minutes as a blanket start? I think my experience of comment has been that people often ramble in the last minute, that people say their points and then often find that they have additional time and feel like they should fill that time. Um, I feel like a lot of the content that people actually want to say happens in the first two minutes. So that might be an easy fix that would reduce the time at least somewhat. Um, while still allowing everyone to speak, which I do really appreciate that everybody who wants to speak is able to speak in the Northampton City Council meetings. I think that it's really powerful and, and sort of exciting. I think another thought I have about public comment is just that this last line, the councils will not respond to any comments from the public. And 
I imagine that that is, and I should do more research, but I imagine that is fairly standard sort of protocol for public comment, particularly as it pertains to the open meeting law and not being able to speak on things that aren't on the agenda. But I will say that it, as a member of the public, it has often felt frustrating to hear like a lot of comment on a particular topic. I'm thinking particularly about like the issue with the cherry trees where like people will come and there'll be 30 minutes to an hour of comment on this issue about the, the cherry trees in Warwick, Warwick place and no one can respond. The counselors cannot respond to it. It's not on the agenda. It doesn't get discussed. So it feels to me like, I don't know, like a little bit of a waste of time that people are saying a lot of stuff on an issue that the council can't even speak to because it's not on the agenda. So that, I guess that's a place where I feel some disconnect around public comment is that mm, there, it feels so disconnected from the meeting sometimes. Like there's, there's all this comment and then there's the agenda of the meeting and the things are just not related. And I don't know, again, I don't really have a solution for that yet, but I'm, that is something I've noticed about comment. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, Councilor Dwight and then um, Vice Chair Simon. So actually, first of all, we're reacting to something that's unique uh, in this respect. Uh, there are new, unique circumstances that created this kind of, that, that prompted this conversation because as Mimi pointed out before, um, actually she was referring to uh, before the new charter when the mayor presided over the council and essentially you had to sign up. And if you didn't make the sign up, you weren't speaking, you had to be present. And in fact, actually was this allowed to have remote participation by the, uh, by the state? Uh, obviously things have changed, rules have changed. We, um, Northampton as noted has been very open about what happens in um, public comment, basically that no topic is off topic. Um, we've had people come recite poetry, sing songs, do performance pieces that have absolutely no bearing or relevance to anything related to municipal government. But it's a point, it's a it's an opportunity to um, just speak in public about things that concern you. Um, and to that extent, I think that service now may have run its, it, because we can now invite people from all over the world, basically, to come and participate, and and they can to talk about any topic. For they're given three minutes to speak in a public forum. That's appealing for a lot of people, and I can understand that. And this speaks to Ezekiel's concern about it, or, or or the excitement, rather, that experience that one experiences by watching these meetings, but the. We have to remember the gist and the purpose and the intent of these meetings is actually to legislate. The public comment is the opportunity for people to come speak truth to power if they are so inclined, or on the rare occasion to actually say, hey, good job, or thanks. Um, and before when the mayor was present and presiding, you could speak to the entire body of municipal government. You could speak to the mayor, you could speak to the council about issues that uh, of the day. Now we've noticed uh, cities like Cambridge and Worcester and uh, other uh, established cities or cities uh, to distinguish them from town meetings and the like. Um, many of them have as noted as, as Councilor Foster mentioned that uh, there were sign up sheets. There are prescribed amount of times, uh, you know, you uh, as Councilor LeBard referred to 15 minutes in Deerfield um, in some cases, actually, I've known, although I think it's a violation of the rules, but in council in Holyoke, that the councilors did respond and, in fact, got in debates with um, constituents. Um, but I believe they're required to speak on agenda items. Anything You can't speak on any topic. You have to speak to items that are presented on the agenda. Um, and I also think it's problematic. I don't think that this, you know, it's not an op it's not a deliberation or a process of legislation to get into debate or discussion with the citizenry because that opportunity is there by personal communication. The public, I mean, the public is allowed to reach out and, co and have a conversation with us or share with us their notions, and they do, and they do either through email or text or or phone or you know, costing you in the in the market or something. 
those those that's actually part of the job that you're supposed to be um, you're supposed to be available to to basically buttonhole on any issue that you want. Um, so those that's essentially what's laid out before us now because of remote participation, we all understand what the circumstances are and what the results are. The as I said, the issue in most of it was the abolition stuff that actually took us late, late, late into the night. And in Council of Barge is correct. We've never gone to uh, in in recent history uh, to the point of almost three thirty in the morning. That's never happened before. Um, and as uh, I think it's the last agenda item, but uh, uh, Member Baskin had commented on the issue about uh, last time about um, a deadline, a drop dead deadline for city council meetings. And we used to have that, that's true. Um, and, and the reason we got rid of that as a rule is because we continued, every time we ran up against it, we always have to vote to suspend rules. And we realized that that really wasn't serving anyone any good. And it actually created a rushed sense that wasn't benefiting anyone. It had this, the opposite problem that people were trying to cram towards the end. And, um, and the result is if you did adjourn with um, items still available, some of them are timely. There are clocks that are ticking, uh, particularly relative to zoning and finance issues that we would have to come back in a special meeting, for instance. Um, and as we have actually most recently in, in the circumstances, because it literally was the only way we could get our work done. So what I've been trying to do is frame it just as Councilor Foster did. Those are, those are the challenges. And they, uh, well, actually, and the biggest challenge is, is to provide a fair and equitable access for the community to speak. Um, there are actually a number of communities that simply don't have public comment. You, you aren't required by the state, but once you do, there are rules that are set in free speech laws and constitutional protections that, that are applied that we have to be mindful as we, as we craft these rules not to limit someone's speech if we're affording them the opportunity to have this speech. So um, there we have it. We, the challenge before us is to provide uh, access and trans, uh, transparency, but also to create efficacy in, in, the, in our deliberations and our function. And now we have this new aspect of remote participation. And by the way, we, we're not entirely sure that we can pull it off when we start meeting back in the council chambers. We do have the means, we have the facilities, but it has, it's untried. So how we would do that, because if public comment occurs and the same with remote participation, uh, the rules do specify that the, everyone within the room and without the room has to be able to hear in, 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 in the same way, hear and, and see. So it's, it, I, I don't know, there's been, I know that, Antonio has been approached about how we can do that and facilitate that, but um, there will come a point sooner than later that we will be convening in public and that's open. I believe we're going to be talking about that at the next council meeting when we want to start doing that. Um, and when that happens, then, um, then for the time being, as I understand it, the rules will be that basically you have to be in attendance at, at um, council chambers in order to participate in public comment. But I think, you know, and again, that speaks to, I agree with Councillor Foster. This actually is an access point that was unrealized before. And in fact, actually creates a level of engagement that is unprecedented. And one that I, I actually, well, for a while, I was kind of, thinking longingly, boy, I wish we had this the whole time. And then at around 3.30 in the morning, I, I wasn't thinking that way so much. But the fact is, is that it really does, it affords an opportunity that, that for people who um, otherwise have not been engaged, who just their, their participation is basically left to post on social media or grousing next to someone at a bar or something. So I, there, there is, that's why this one item, this is probably one of the bigger items that we're gonna be discussing. So I'm not sure that we will get to the other items on the agenda because this one is very complicated and has such an enormous impact. Thank you.
Um, Vice Chair Simon. Thank you. I'm glad to hear actually everybody uh, pretty much having the same concerns whether it's uh, active council members or our uh, public comment uh, about the very negative effect uh, extended meetings have on the accessibility of government to the people of the city. Because that's my opinion from outside watching this that you it might be a tremendous thing that 150 people are speaking, but when you're actually deliberating and voting on things the next day, then you cut yourself off from uh, most people who, who uh, might want to see what's going on. So I, I'm glad we're on the same page. I actually have a suggestion. So I have a couple suggestions. So uh, the first thing I would suggest is that there should be uh, a one hour time limit for public comment at every council meeting. I also think that public comment should be handled in, on a priority basis to residents of Northampton. And all residents should be able to speak first during that hour before any others can speak. Um, but, I, but I want to address an idea that deals with the unique situation the council has just gone through, which is what's provoking this whole discussion to begin with. And this connects to uh, one of the rules that uh, I hope we'll be talking about at a subsequent meeting, which is 5.5, which is the matters requiring two votes. First off, I don't think you need to vote twice, but there's, but the idea behind the voting twice, as I would understand it, is that you're announcing an issue for discussion by the council at one meeting so that people will have a chance to know what's going on. And before you take a final vote can have their say, I would keep that because I think that's wise. Um, I just wouldn't have a vote the first time. I would have an announcement, a description, and then a second uh, meeting. And let me tell you how this uh, um, pertains to my suggestion. So let's say we're at the first night of an item that's on an agenda, and you've got your one hour of public comment. And at the end of one hour, it's pretty clear that we haven't absorbed all the public comment that's available. What I would suggest in a situation like that is the setting up of a special council meeting between uh, this first meeting and when there'll be a final vote, specifically to take more public comment on that matter. So you preserve the one hour limit at all council meetings, but in situations where the one hour is not sufficient and there appears to be more public desire to speak to the council on a matter, to schedule a special meeting to hear that. That allows, that would allow everybody still to have their say in a public meeting and still allow you to keep 60 minute limits, which I think are gonna be absolutely necessary to deal with the issue of the length of the meeting. Um, so that's what I wanted to suggest. Yeah, uh, Councilor Dwight. Um, those are excellent ideas, Alan, but I, I should point out, though, that that's exactly what um, subcommittees are for. Um, so that, and in fact, you're absolutely right about the two readings. The two readings are quite literally that reading. See, so the, uh, the reading is the first announcement. Uh, Northampton, for some reason, decided to take it as deciding that's when a vote occurred. But, and we will talk about that later. And actually, if you look, all within all rules, there's all mechanisms in order to delay the vote, postpone table, or, or expand the discussion on a vote, particularly if, if it's become dem demonstrated that there is significant community uh, concern relative to it. And then you can actually also, you would, the council would refer the item to the uh, subcommittee, say uh, community, uh, community resources or um, what, and in fact, actually, as part of our other conversations discussed, maybe we develop a committee specific to that to hear issues that uh, require further investigation. But that's why, I, you know, that because the committees are the committees that we make. So we design and craft them and they're for the purpose to serve us. So that if, if it is determined that there is an op there's a need for more public input, or more public participation, where there's also more flexibility to which something member Baskin has referred to, there can be a give and take, particularly if your items, if you're agenda specific. 
um, if uh, and I will use this as an example, police funding. Um, if we had referred, if we didn't have two readings, if we only had one reading on the budget, um, if we only had one vote on the budget, that we would refer it to finance committee and we refer it to other committees for further discussion where that item is specifically discussed, not everything else, not the cherry trees or the dog kennel or whatever. Those items, uh, that's where we have those, we hear from folks on that on those issues in council meeting. But the recommendation from the, what I've seen from other communities is that they require that you speak to items on the agenda. <clears throat> and I think if, they, if, if we do start to see that, uh, and I, as I point out, this is unique, it's not, it's not common, but if, if, if something like uh, the police funding, particularly when there's a deadline looming on budget votes, um, it would, you know, rather than convene a whole council special meeting, you can actually have a subcommittee that would do that and, and devote its energy and time and attention to all that at once. Uh, Member Baskin. I do think though that part of the, part of what makes public comment potentially useful in sort of, as opposed to what, you were saying earlier, Councillor Dwight, about the, um, you know, talking to your counselor outside of the meeting is that I think comment does give you an opportunity to address all of the counselors at once. And I do think that that is part of what is meaningful about it is it, you know, someone might not have time to have, and I mean, you could argue they shouldn't be talking to counselors in other wards, they should only be talking to their ward counselor and their at large counselors, but that's still three separate conversations that have to be separate conversations due to open meeting law, um, presumably. I mean, unless your citizenry is well-versed enough that they can figure out how to talk in small enough groupings. But the like, I don't know, it is a lot more work um, to speak with all of those people individually. There is something to being able to address the body as a whole that I think is important. I, I, would, I would certainly be in favor of restricting comment to items on the agenda. I think that the... I, it, I think it's kind of frustrating when there's comment that has nothing to do with anything that's on the agenda. Um, like it, because it, just because it doesn't like, I don't know, it feels like it, it feels very ineffective to me. Um, so I, I guess I would be interested in restricting the scope. I also would be interested in potentially I don't know, this is maybe a wilder idea, but I, it would be useful if comment on items was associated with the item. Like if instead of having two hours of public comment at the beginning or an hour of public comment at the beginning, that's sort of hard to synthesize and track if like the public could speak on items as they came up in the agenda rather than all at the front. So like if there was an agenda item that was people wanted to speak on, they could, and maybe you could only speak on on one, one item per meeting, which is, would be a little restrictive, um, cause, but, you know, potentially useful, just cause I feel like the, I don't know, then it could be brought into engagement with the conversation that the council was having. Cause that, I think that continues to me to be the thing, part of the frustration is that you have all this comment and then none of it is directly addressed, whether or not it's relevant to the, I don't know, like it, it feels very much like people sort of, like it's talking at cross purposes. Like I, I would be more interested in comment that was specific to agenda items and then could be engaged with in the discussion of the agenda items. Uh, Councilor Dwight? Um, all good points, but again, that's what you can do in subcommittee meetings as it stands now. I, I understand that the appeal to, I mean, most people who either attend these things or watch these things watch the council meeting. Those are the ones that get televised uh, and the like. And, and there's an opportunity, there's maybe a, a louder megaphone. But the fact is subcommittee meetings is where you get granular. It's where you actually have those more um, synthesize conversations and discussions with give and take that, that um, you're expressing a frustration with. The, the, 
you know, the, the, the structure of this is such it's principally, as I said, the, the council meetings are designed for us to deliberate, um, hear input and testimony also to, in the subcommittees are for research and, um, narrowing focus. And then those committees that devote that energy, this committee is a perfect example. We're going to make recommendations that we're having these conversations that are specific to the rules. Then we're not talking, well, we are talking about that. We did talk about the cherry tree sorta, but the fact is we're not doing a give and take. We're not discussing where we, you know, what we do about them. And then we make the recommendations and then it's vetted and debated and, and where more public comment is, is probably likely to occur. Mimi is uh, an old hand at this. So Mimi is here to discuss this with us, but by and large, for the most part, we have not heard from many people. This is the same frustration that came up during charter review that um, uh, the level of participation is much smaller. Um, so it, it's, I, I think to your point, if if what it is that you, the dynamic that you appreciate or enjoy is the give and take and engagement, then that is more likely to occur in, in subcommittees. If you, we did it in the council meetings, council meetings would go past four because if we had the point where there was essentially an expanded conversation with call and response from counselors, um, debating with the public and debating amongst themselves you, you that would really not be an appropriate way for in my opinion for a representative government to work i don't think it would be effective i'm going to chime in for a, a, a minute and say um i a low-hanging fruit member basket i i, I really kind of love, love the idea of the two minute um comment limit because i never considered what that, but you're right, it does seem like we really do get the gist of it in the first uh, two minutes, and that is a way to curtail it. So I'm going to weigh in on that one. And I, if uh, Solicitor Seawald is is here, um, yeah, maybe they, you know, uh, maybe Solicitor Seawald, you could just uh, address why why we don't answer back uh, during council meetings. I'm sure there's some. Well, there, there are several history. reasons. Yeah. Um, First of all, this is the opportunity for the, and I think that just historically as a pr practical matter, this is the, the public's chance to speak. It's not the council's chance, you know, opportunity to have their, their moment. It's the public's chance. Um, because we have an open, um, uh, if, because we have an, uh, an open public comment session with no rules, um, we are going to get off into topics that are not on the agenda. And we, and because if one counselor can respond, then another counselor has the same right to respond. And now we're in a full-fledged debate on something that's not on the agenda. Um, you know, people can come in and talk about uh, what they think of public employees. And now you're gonna get in a back and forth about the behavior of a public employee when the public employee is not there. It, it opens the door to so many problems. Um, but, and I think that uh, as Councilor Dwight said, if we start getting into, into back and forth at public comment, when are you actually going to get to the business of the meeting? That's, and you know, and uh, so, uh, you know, that's my response. I mean, it does run the risk of, of violating the open meeting law at some point, uh, but I but I really think it was just giving the public a chance to speak. Member Baskin, did you want to respond? Yeah, I, I guess I think that the the sort of the the hard line between the public comment and the business of the meeting, to me, and this is maybe, I'm not in favor of keeping the public comment on any topic like I do think that it the public comment should be about what is on the agenda of the meeting um I know that's also hard to to regulate potentially and so there there are other issues that come up with that but clearly some other towns and cities are doing that um so it's not without precedent I guess I'm I don't know I I think that the I like the idea, I like the way that the subcommittees that Council Dwight, you were sort of presenting subcommittees and the work of them. I think I have some questions about 
what we could do in the crafting of the rules and committees, which is sort of the charge of this group to recommend about, to make the committees feel more, like if, if members of the public should be coming to the subcommittees to have like granular detailed conversations about the things that they're commenting on in public comment, why aren't they? What is it about the structure that is stopping that from happening? That's something I'm really curious about. Um, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of committees, the scopes of them are not super clear. Um, I think people are not as clear about the workings of the subcommittees. Um, I was really surprised when I went to a subcommittee meeting and was given more, more space to speak and ask questions. Um, I did not expect that because I think my expectations were based on the council meetings and the structure of them. So I think that to an outside observer coming to the council meetings, going to a subcommittee meeting, it, the assumption is it's gonna be just like the council meeting. I'm getting to comment at the beginning, then they're all going to talk and like it will be the same structure. So if there's a different structure for subcommittees, I think that could be clearer. Um, although I know the subcommittees probably govern their own rules to some extent. I also think a lot of topics are, I'm curious about the way the committee of, on finance is nestled into the council meetings because it strikes me that a lot of the topics that people want to comment on are topics on the committee of finance agenda and that meeting doesn't seem to often have its own public comment section because it's within the like i guess i don't see that meeting as functioning in the way that the subcommittee meetings you were describing function and because that's the most visible committee meeting to people who are coming to general council meetings, I think that it it presents the idea that it's going to be the same or that there'll even be less less opportunity for public engagement. Um, those are some thoughts. Uh, Vice Chair Simon. Thanks. I guess in 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 one way I'm sort of an absolutist about this idea of public comment. I think any citizen should be able to speak to their elected officials about anything they want. Um, the issue about speaking is something on the agenda. I mean, that, that really wouldn't have saved any time in this most recent circumstance because everybody was talking about something on the agenda. It was really a question of so much time was devoted to it. But, you know, suppose somebody comes in front of the council and they have some idea about something that's not on the agenda. I mean, why wouldn't you want to hear that? Or or even just to, to beef about, I don't know, the taxes are too high or the public works is too slow plowing or, or whatever. This is one way elected officials are going to gather information about uh, either uh, a decision to be made or the job that the city is doing. And, and I wouldn't restrict people from saying what they like. Um, I would, of course, suggest that there's some total time limits because I've suggested that already, but I certainly keep it open. Um, and in the unusual situation where there's extraordinary public comment that's backed up, then I'd make some other accommodations for the full council to hear it. Um, I just think that um, there's, there's a way to handle this that allows people, the citizens right to petition their government um, and also allows the government to get the job done um, in a timely manner. Well, sir, Seawald. No, you're, you're, you're muted. muted. I mean, I was muted. Um, I just want to put this in some legal context, uh, given what Vice Chair Simon just said. Um, it's exactly the opposite. The law expects that the counselors are going to have that interaction with their their constituents before getting to the meeting. Okay, there are seven days in the week to contact your counselor. And the law carves out one period of, of in the life of a council in which no one has the right to speak to their counselor. And that's at a meeting. The open meeting law specifically says that no one has the right to speak at any public meeting unless recognized by the chair. So it's exactly the opposite of what Mr. You know, what Vice Chair Simon just said. That's what the law expects. Now, you know, you may want to open up uh, these channels, to, you know, this public forum, 
But just understand this is swimming upstream against the open meeting law. What you're talking about is a public hearing. That's when the public has the right to speak, when due process attaches and decisions about the rights of specific individuals are being made. That's when the public has the right to speak, not when legislation is being done. Just want to be clear about that. Uh, so, Solicitor Seawall, I was hoping that you hit a note that I was hoping uh, you could address. Remember my question after the kind of racial slur that was said in public comment during one of the meetings and we had a conversation which was enlightening to me about the difference of with uh, public uh, public comment in a public hearing versus general public comment. Would you just speak to that? Because I, I know um, Res uh, Mimi uh, Audrey's actually had concerns about that too. And so, yeah, I'd love to just briefly. As I said, a public hearing is a, is a, uh, a convened uh, event in which the public anyone has the right to address the decision-making body uh, on the issue that's being decided, okay? It's not an opportunity to get up and sing a song or recite a poem. It's to speak to the decision-making body about the decision to be made. A meeting, on the other hand, is none of that. A meeting is the opportunity for uh, the body to uh, take what they've learned outside in the world either through contacts with their constituency constituents at all other times during the week and discuss it among themselves. Okay. When you open a public uh, comment, and I think that this is what we were talking about, you can't stop someone from using foul language, defaming someone. Uh, you cannot prevent them from saying almost anything unless you have rules in place about what the limits are what the rules are, okay? The way it is right now, there is no opportunity to prevent anybody from saying almost anything once they're recognized. And uh, so I, I don't know if I've addressed your specific- Right, so just to clarify, uh, the limitation on, on freedom of speech that would have happened for that racial slur that I was upset about, if there had been a public hearing, if that had been a public hearing, that wouldn't have been allowed because what wasn't it wasn't germane to the right. topic. It was, it was it allowed was. in general public comment. Is that correct? That's yeah. right. That's right. All right. I just thought that was interesting. Um, Councillor Foster, the solicitor to see. Well, I want to see if I'm understanding what you said correctly, especially in the scope of this committee. Um, so as of now, we don't have rules limiting speech, and because people can speak to any topic. However, we could, as a council or with this committee, recommend rules that would pro prohibit racialized language or, but I mean, I know that that's, that's going to be a really tricky thing to do. Are you saying that there is opportunity to create that no. or no? Uh, you, no, you would not be able to def start defining vulgar language. Uh, there are no, you know, seven words you can't say at city council. Um, it, it, it just doesn't work that way. There was a case out of uh, Framingham where the school committee um, was, you know, preventing people from saying certain words. And, you know, you've opened the public forum, you've opened the, the First Amendment forum. And it is, this is not a First Amendment forum. Your city council meetings are not a First Amendment forum until you open them as a First Amendment forum. They are exactly the opposite of First Amendment forum. And so, you know, uh, so, but, you know, it's, you, when you open them, you open the floodgates. Now, can you limit it to items on the agenda? Probably. Can you limit it to items that were, are within the jurisdiction of the body that is meeting? Probably. But um, you're probably not going to be uh, able to, anything that would smack in any way of, of uh, be, regulation based on the content of the speech, what is said, as opposed to the time, place, and manner in which it is stated. That's the, the, those are the touchstones. You can regulate the time, place, and manner of the speech, but you can never regulate the content of the speech. I uh, just, just uh, wanted to just add before I, um, someone else speaks that I, I didn't mean to derail the conversation, but I do think this, uh, I remember that conversation with Solicitor Seawald, and I do think it plays into our decision about sticking to agenda items or limits, you know, and how, 
and what limitations on public comment um, look like. I just wanted to explain why I brought that particular item up. Uh, yes, well, uh, member, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, um, uh, Vice Chair Simon, sorry. Thanks, I just wanted to actually ask the solicitor what the point of that distinction was because I didn't really get that. Uh, because um, you want um, the not to limit uh, the the access uh, the topics on which you can uh, uh, address the the council or a, a body, and I just wanted it to be clear that the open meeting law um, is exactly the opposite of what we're all talking about. The open meeting law envisions that the work of, of the councils be done outside the meeting with their constituents and that you come to the meeting to do the business of the meeting. And so when you are, um, the, the broader the access to council at the meeting, the more outside of what the expectations of the open meeting law um, public comment becomes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't see any violation of law by letting people. It's speak. not a violation of law. No, no. You can certainly allow more access. Right. But I just want to be clear. The way this is structured is you have meetings that are not forums, not open to, to the public in terms of communication. That happens outside the meeting. And then you have public hearings in which the public has the absolute right to speak on the topic, on the individual topic. That's how this, the, the whole framework has been set up. Historically, the whole framework was, there are certain things that have to have public hearings. And so when you're having a public hearing, that's an opportunity for the public to address in public the body. Right, but, right. but we all acknowledge that the council can set its own rules for its meeting, right. which, which is why we're discussing this. And in fact, the council is mandated by the charter to have public comment. No, it is not. It is, I don't believe that. Yeah. I, oh, it is? I don't. It, Section uh, two. Oh, the, oh, the council is, yes. Six. Right. right. Yeah. Regular uh, meetings in the city council should be held at a time and place fixed by ordinance. All regular meetings shall provide for a period of public comment, provided, however, the city council may promulgate rules that regulate right. a period of public comment as deemed appropriate. Right. So the city council here has to until it changes its charter. Councillor uh, White. It's also worth noting, and I don't know what the what bearing this has on on the issues that you just described, uh, Solicitor Seawald. But public comment comes before we actually convene. Uh, public comment is a period before the the meeting actually is assembled, and that we uh, we do a roll call and and convene. So, and I, I suspect that the purpose of that was. That it was not in it was not part of the body of the meeting. It was a separate entity, and this is under the old charter. the The new charter, of course, doesn't specify when public comment will be held. But the fact is, is that we're not convened. Actually, makes it a little squishier in my mind. Oh, Councillor Foster. I don't mind waiting, um, Solicitor Seawald, if you wanted to respond, because I actually had a little bit of a turn to make. Maybe I missed what Councillor Dwight said. Uh, it, we, we have our public comment occurs before the right. meeting is convened. So I don't, so it's in this kind of nebulous world. It's like we're having a tea party and everyone just showed up and we're having a talk and stuff, but it's not, it's a, and it's governed by our rules, yet at the same time, it's not within the it's not within the context of an actual meeting. So I don't know if that needs clarification uh, uh, proceeding in the rules or not. I mean, should, I mean, in this case, for instance, we convened before we had public comment. Um, uh, but uh, the regular council meeting for forever and for no reason I could actually determine the public comment comes before. So therefore it's not part of the council meeting technically, but it does hold up hearings, it holds up everything. But it, but it is a public deliberation because you're all convened and you're listening. So, so you are a convened body, whether you consider it part of your meeting uh, under your rules 
you're still subject to the open meeting law. And I was just in, and you know, I just wanted it to be clear that what the structure was of meetings and hearings under the open meeting law. And you're just, and as the attorney general says in her, in her most recent update, public comments just not covered by the open meeting law. So you're gonna to have to figure out how far outside of the open meeting law you want to go. And I didn't mean to suggest that you didn't have the authority to do that. Obviously you do, you've been doing it for, for as long as I've been city solicitor. But um, the question is how far outside the sort of the structure of meet, business meetings you want to go. And that's essentially what your meetings are. They're business meetings. And that's what the meetings of all these bodies are, are business meetings, the business of the city. Thank you, solicitor. Um, Councillor Foster. Thank you. Um, I guess I have two slightly like thoughts related to this. They're not related to each other, but I'll, I'll speak on them. One is, um, Member Baskin, your your suggestion, you know, that we could take a lot of time from public comment just with the two minute, reducing to a two minute time limit, um, makes a lot of sense. One thing I noticed though, is that it's actually the transition between commenters that adds a pretty significant amount of time to comment. Um, you know, like, so a lot of times it's, um, it's changing so that um, the person, if a person's going over time, getting them to wrap up, calling on the next person, that can add a minute or two. So, um, you know, reducing from three minutes to two minutes certainly would reduce some time, but it's it's kind of the whole, the whole spectrum. Um, the other thing is, Solicitor to see, well, this is another question for you. Um, I had run into you a few months ago and, and had asked, and I just wanted some clarification um, to member Simon's suggestion um, that if I remember correctly, you had said that we would not as a council have the authority to limit comment to Northampton residents. Um, and I'm assuming on the, uh, I just wanna make sure I understood you correctly um, or if we would be able to give priority to residents there. I think you can set this up the way you want. I think I was speaking to the fact that you have no rules so that you know, you just can't decide. We're not going to hear anybody who doesn't reside in Northampton. Not that I think a lot of downtown business people or business people in town are going to have a problem with that rule because they're going to be excluded if they don't live in town. But, you know, theoretically, I think it could be done. Uh, Councilor Dwight. Uh, the problem that you referred to is one that actually just only presented. Uh, because we were able to participate remotely, the um, because people from out of town have participated in the past, and you know, and uh, Councilor C uh, Solicitor Seawalt's comment is spot on. Um, many of the business owners don't live in town, yet they they were free to speak to issues that they felt were germane to them. Um, the and as I said, we we haven't experienced the the amplitude of what. Uh, of what we experienced in this last year. And the fact is, is that uh, two of you, actually, this is, this is all you know of city council. This is what it's been, this is how it's been. It's not how it will be, although things have certainly changed. They, they've changed and I agree for the better, but the fact is, is that this is why I recommended the establishment of this committee because it's better to have rules in place by the time you guys convene again, and it won't be with me but you guys convene again and that you guys are gonna have to, you want to deliver the best access with the most equity at the same time, allow yourselves the means to do as Solicitor Seawall said, the business that you're expected to do within the context of that meeting. So therein, that's where the real challenge is. And so it's all relatively new territory, but I think, you know, defining the edges of what public comment can be is a perfectly reasonable and sensible way to approach this. That um, whether, and I'm open to any and all suggestions, whether it's uh, specific to agenda items, specific to residents, or uh, uh, or specific be uh, or specific to time, or whatever, or only people who qualify for a sign up, or so on and so forth. 
any of those or all of those or some combination of those all seem fine to me. Right. Certainly available for conversation. I just want to add that, um, and then Council Foster, uh, I want to add that when you, when we talk of equity, we also need to be speaking to um, equity for counselors. I, you know, most people don't want work seven and a half hours at night, the night, the night shift with a 10 minute only break. I'm just putting that out there that we, we, are, we are also included in the equity picture. <laughs> uh, yes, Councilor Foster. You'll find me, I, I, I will support depending on technology and attorney general roles and, and how this moves forward. I would support remote participation in public comment moving forward. Like I, I think that that is something that has produced um, opportunities for people to engage and, and that I would want to hold on to. Um, so as we craft rules, I'm, I'm certainly coming from there. I've, I've seen people who just, you know, by nature of caregiving responsibilities or, um, you know, other factors going on in their home lives, remote participation is really the only way that they, that they are able to participate. Um, so that's something that's, been important to me to hang on to. And the discussion around the signups has been an interesting one because it is one way if people sign up by a specific time that, that you do limit comment. But I know when I first started coming to council meetings and sort of started engaging, um, I was a pretty shy speaker. And it might be after other people had given a comment that I, I worked up the sort of courage or confidence to feel like I too could join. And I, I, I just wanna hold on to the fact that speaking to council is an intimidating process. Um, you know, I think more so in chambers than over Zoom, um, but that's, a, that's, that's an intimidating thing. And I think if, if signups for that were to end before the meeting as some other communities do or, or something that, um, that we would inadvertently box out people who didn't know how to participate or how to engage in that way. Um, you know, the sort of regulars would know to sign up ahead of time and be sure that they were they were on the list. But I mean, it's 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 fairly often that I have constituents ask me how they can make a public comment, and you know, you sort of find yourself explaining. And and I don't, I I think we would inadvertently really limit engagement um, if that were a direction we took. Vice Chair Simon. Um, interestingly, I'm 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 not a fan of. Uh, remote public comment if, if you're back in session. Um, I think people should show up just like I think the council should get back together again. Um, and that's how the public's business is done in public. Now, if you do want to hang on to some sort of remote public access, I would insist that the cameras have to be on because this is not an anonymous operation here. And people have to have to be seen in the context of the, I think they should be seen in the context of the public meeting. You have to identify yourself. You, you should be seen, just like council members should be. Um, so, you know, I think, I think there are lots of little rules that, that can come into play here, but I think ultimately you've got to decide, are you going to leave it open-ended or are you going to limit it? And I'd hope you'd limit it because I think it's critical for you to be able to get through your meetings. Uh, Member Baskin and then Councillor Dwight. I agree with Councillor Foster in that I think that I feel like the remote participation in, in comment is a significant shift in who has access to it. I think they're like, I understand the desire for people to show up, but I think that being able to show up in person at seven o'clock in council chambers on a Thursday is just not an option for a lot of people. And I do think their voices should get to be in the comment. I think that the, I do agree about the anonymity point that you just raised, Vice Chair Simon, that the, and that's in the rules about comment right now. It says individuals wishing to speak shall be recognized by the presiding officer and shall state their name and city or town of residence. And regularly people have been not stating their name or city or town of residence, and they've still been able to comment. So that also brings up a question to me about like, if we add more rules to comment, how will those rules be enforced? Like is the, cause that's then also putting more on the council president as the presiding officer or whoever is presiding that day, um, you know, to 
as of the rules are right now, it suggests to me that if someone doesn't state their name, they shouldn't be permitted to speak in comment, but that's not what's been happening. People have, have chosen to stay anonymous and they've still been permitted to speak. So that's something I am curious about if we do move to limit the comment more is how will we do that in a way that, like how will we enable the presiding officer to do that successfully? Um, thank you, Councillor Dwight. The issue of anonymity actually it came up years ago and it was relative to uh, victims of domestic violence who wanted to testify before the council. They did not, and it's actually, we used to ask for your name and address. We needed your street address. And that's why we turned it into the town. Um, and if you want it, and we also want to provide protection for people who are concerned about um, possible threats, but at the same time did not want to be excluded from participating uh, and, and speaking on an issue. And why, that's why we essentially liberalize those rules relative to that. The enforcement issue is challenging, uh, particularly um, as it came up with remote participation. It's really, it's, it's, it's difficult for the presiding officer basically working like the gears and shifts of the Wizard of Oz's magic machine, wherever the hell it is. And this has been a learning curve for the, for the current presiding officer. When I served as presiding officer before, I could be more, uh, it was in, in chambers and I was able to enforce those rules pretty easily. Um, just say, please give your name and address. Um, or also, I mean, we had this amorphous <laughs> rule that you'll see is actually in the council rules, essentially is uh, acknowledging and abiding by the decorum of the chambers. Very, you know, that there's no, spe that there's no specificity there. It's just to keep the honest people honest. And then certainly there are people who who feel it's more dynamic and powerful to stray from that. But for instance, in the last Zoom meeting that we had, uh, I think it was relative to the budget, there was someone who was masturbating on screen. Now they weren't recognized, but the fact is, is they were deleted because they, 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 viol they were the equivalent of Zoom bombing. And then our very first meeting on the budget, on our first remote meeting was Zoom bombed right at, right at the outset. And it, is very, it was very difficult for uh, the council president to try and figure out how do you stop, uh, at that point, it was something like eight voices who were all screaming horrible uh, racial epithets and other horrible obscenities just for the sake of trying to get it in before we could figure out how to turn it off. So as a rule, the presiding officer basically is given a fairly wide latitude. And, but, you know, as the solicitor mentioned, not all of it's really truly enforceable. It's, uh, if you want, if, for instance, we, during the remote participation, we had a man who identified himself as MAGA something. He was, uh, and, you know, you call him out by saying that's a, that's a pseudonym, that's a lie, that's not your name. And, I, it, it's just, or we had another, we had a local business owner who spoke close to five minutes, went way over time as the presiding officer continued to say, please stop talking. And then eventually you had to cut him off. But we'll learn these things, we'll figure it out. And there will be people who um, I've seen over the course of my time here, all sorts of wonderful and horrible things occur during public comment. And we, so far we survived them all. I just want to add that, you know, if, I don't know about the possibility of someone else helping uh, both Laura and the presiding officer. If we do go to a situation where we have a hybrid, where we're having remote comment, physical, you know, people there, it just seems like that's going to be so technical that the president, uh, council president won't really be able to participate in the, as a, as a counselor at, at some point. I, I don't know if that's true, but I, I'm just imagining um, if we get back in, in chambers and we're, and I, I do agree with allowing remote comment, um, but I'm just thinking of the, um, of the possibility, I don't know if it's a, a legal issue, if, so, if there was a tech person who could actually facil could be facilitating the comments uh, or at least uh, assisting both Laura and the president, because I think it's gonna get even more unwieldy if we're having two types of comment come in. 
And I also think that we should allow um, some amount of remote uh, participation for counselors. But yes, Councilor Dwight. I think it's appropriate in that case and that, uh, to invite Antonio Pagan to come and speak with us. And mm, so he can, he, he, he can describe what the parameters are, what the limitations are of, uh, of our, our facilities. Because, I mean, we can make rules for something that might not even exist, so. That's correct. That's a great idea. I, I love that idea. And actually, I just was reminded um, if, if we would all think it's appropriate. Um, Ann Kennedy from the Policing Review Commission, his day job is doing hybrid participation. And I actually had a conversation and he offered to come and speak to us about what that could look like. You know, having a mixed, um, he has mixed meetings with in-person people and people kind of zooming in. And uh, it, it sounded like he had some interesting ideas on the technical level. If you all thought that was appropriate, I could invite him to speak on that. Oh, oh let's see, Solicitor, uh, I don't, Solicitor Seawald. I, I just wanted to let the committee know that this very afternoon, uh, the mayor, chief of staff, Antonio, uh, the council president, uh, David Pomerantz from facilities, we all met today to start the conversation about what to do about hybrid in-person, you know, and all the different uh, variations of potential hybrid where, you know, some counselors are hybrid, are, are remote, some public is remote, or are the councils all in chambers and all of the public remote? So there are, uh, there. so we just started that conversation today. So I'm not really sure that Antonio, and so there are some things that need to be investigated before we get back together and start talking further about that. So I just want you to know where the, you know, the, the rest of the city is out there, including the, the, the council president. Okay, uh, so sounds like an discussion. ongoing conversation then. Is that what you're saying, Solicitor C. Wall? Yes, my, it is. Um, uh, Councilor Foster and then Vice Chair Simon. I've had a brief back and forth with Al Williams from Northampton Open Media about this as well. And he was at that meeting that you were at Solicitor Seawald and he also offered to come and um, talk with us uh, if that was helpful. And um, oh, great. they're gonna be testing something tomorrow. Um, so just a, a little touch more to add on to that. Okay, um, Vice Chair Simon, did you? Yeah, I'm actually of the opinion that not all of these issues have to be resolved by the work of this uh, committee um, that 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 every step doesn't have to be deline delineated in a rule. So you could, for example, simply say that public comment can be taken either in person or through electronic means, and then and then deal with the structure of that at another point. I mean, it's already what seven twenty here. We're still on this one topic. Uh, when to me the matter is simply how long do you want public comment to go? And then you can worry about the details of the form of public comment later on. I mean, one of the things, one of the critiques I would have with the council rules is they seem far more detailed than they really need to be. And getting to Councillor uh, uh, Dwight's comments about how the presiding officer will simply have to adjust. I mean, when you're dealing with humans, you're, you're going to be thrown curveballs in these situations that sometimes a person ends up speaking for five minutes and you have to deal with that. Sometimes you get somebody who's uncouth and swearing and you have to deal with that. And you can't write a rule for every circumstance and it doesn't matter if you have the rule because they, you still have to deal with the situation in front of you. And there's always gonna be something that will come up that, that you didn't anticipate and it's just gonna to have to be managed at the moment it happens. Um, and so I, so I think developing a general framework is is really what this committee ought to do and the tech the feasibility of something later on will either happen or not and it, that shouldn't delay the decision of this committee to make uh, a decision on in this case what's public comment how much public comment will we have how can people participate um, so I just want to check in and then I'll get to uh, Councilor Dwight. So, you know, I was hoping to wrap up the meeting by eight. I didn't, I didn't make a defined time, but um, I am glad that we have, I'm glad we have had all these, the remote uh, meeting participation 
and uh, public comment together because uh, if members of the public are we're looking at our agenda, I think that we are touching upon those. So I don't regret doing that, but I, I think it's okay for us not. Obviously, we're going to have to come back to um, these agenda items. And I guess a question, I guess I, I haven't um, served on such an open-ended uh, committee yet. So I don't know like what, you know, when we, we say consideration of modification, is this an ongoing discussion? And then we come back, or are we looking to actually vote on something tonight precisely? Uh, Councilor Dwight. Yeah, I was going to speak to that actually. Oh, I think great. that Thank you. Uh, let, he, he, now the process here is that we'll, we'll make recommendations for rules okay. that will be uh, voted on in January, the first meeting in January. So we're not going to change the rules uh, in this body. At least that's the way I had envisioned it. It wouldn't, I mean, at this point, because we are making it up as we go along, we're stuck with the rules that we got, and those that creates it generates its own problems and its own responses. But these are rules that will be voted on by the new body the, when the council convenes in the first Monday in January. The way that I would recommend proceeding is that we don't make our recommendation yet on this item because, as we've noted, they touch on all their items that we will be bringing up. But I think it, it is appropriate to focus on these items that are very important, the ones that we've identified as being very important. There are other ones that will come up, I think, in the course of our conversation, but that we will, um, by the end of our, our, our session, we will start to get a sense of what um, recommendations would be the most viable to make to craft. I, we don't have to rewrite the rules. We only have to make recommendations for the rules that will be redrafted, hopefully. I mean, in the past, this is unique. We, In the past, the council has um, essentially allowed, when we've had an attorney on the council, we let the attorney handle it with the, in working with the solicitor and trying to craft some rules. Um, and as a result, in this would speak to uh, member Simon's issue is that's why you're seeing a uh, very detailed and worded uh, wordy document. It's, and what we would do is then it would come to the council floor and the council will debate and discuss those rules as it comes up and then vote and approve them. So in this case, that's why I asked for this committee. This is unusual in so far as we ask for Councilors to discuss and then also citizens to discuss because as it became very evident that there is a vested interest by the citizenry about how our rules affect and impact their ability to access their government as, as uh, Member Baskin is pointing out. And as such, so that's our charge in the end. And I, and I think that to make, if we voted on something now, like a rule recommendation now, that we would find towards the end of the, you know, our meetings that we go, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't make so much sense in the, in relation to like, the, the other issues that we brought up. It, it, I think, I like the idea that we're focusing on one issue per meeting at this point, particularly the big ones. The, this one, the, uh, the, actually you have three items here, but I think we identified four or five. And um, this one was the biggest, actually, or the one that certainly weighed most heavily on our, that the one that we, 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 we still have uh, trauma associated with. So it's, that makes sense that we discuss this and in, in a very full conversation. And so I, I think as your proceeding seems to be okay, um, I would recommend if you haven't, everyone read the rules as they are now and you don't have to find, you don't have to suss out what you, where you think failures lie, but understand that the, the as Solicitor Seawall has said, the principal uh, objective of these rules is to make it uh, the, uh, the most efficient way and most just way to craft law and to uh, do the business and legislate of the council. So whatever advances those, uh, that, agenda and anything you look at and consider an impediment is certainly worth noting and I hope someone does it makes a point of bringing that up bringing it up to the chair who would include it in the uh, in the ag next agenda or you can bring it up for instance in the new business portion of the meeting where you can say we I would like to discuss this at the next meeting 
right. which so my, is by our rules. <laughs> right. So my plan had been, uh, you know, I went over the, the meeting minutes from last time and any topics that came up, I was going, you know, I, I'll take, we have three, so I guess we have uh, a few ways to get things on the agenda or suggest things on the agenda because I will take, if no one suggests anything, I will start working through that, the, what we identify, we identify through the meeting minutes. And then we, I'm so glad we added the identify priority topics, uh, member Baskin's suggestion, because I think at the end of a meeting, you will probably jog ideas uh, for further topics. So that's, but yeah, I just wanted to have that discussion because I want to run a good meeting, but, uh, and I, to me, these are so intertwined, like length of meeting has everything to do with public comment. I mean, how you handle it, you know, is different. So I'm glad that they're there, but I think, um, but I guess I'm wondering, and so I think I, 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 I'm glad that there, that we can kind of discuss them um, together, but I guess I just was thinking about when we vote for recommendation. So, so are you saying, Councillor um, Dwight, that, you know, the next one or two meetings, we continue working down this list and then would we uh, make recommendations at the end of that chunk and then go on to something else? Are you saying that we kind of discuss these things and then later, much later on, we make recommendations? What was your suggestion? Well, my suggestion was to wait to the end once, we, okay. once we've synthesized, but that's only my suggestion. It's the desire of the committee. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I can, I'll, I'll hear all suggestions. I just wanted to be clear about that. Um, because yeah, I want to make these meetings not too long, but I also, I guess, um, let's see what time is it? 7.30, we could continue. Um, if everyone we could, uh, felt okay, we could continue. If, um, if someone strongly objects, we could, we could not. But it, it, I guess what I'm saying is these are gonna to have to be on the next agenda uh, for the next meeting as well, to, um, at least because we didn't really touch on, of course, all the issues related to length of meeting remote meeting participation. Yes, Councilor Foster. I wonder if, um, just to help us keep organized with our work as we go forward, if we wanna have a, a sort of very draft list of working recommendations, not that the recommendation is, we're gonna limit public comment in this way and that's it, never to be revisited. But if we wanna like have, a sort of draft list of kind of what seems like where we're heading just to carry forth. Cause I'm, I'm concerned that otherwise by the end of this, we're gonna go back to each topic and, and not have a little bow from each meeting on it. But I wonder if we could like tie the bow loosely at each meeting, um, but then know that that's to be revisited as we, as we go through all of these topics. Uh, uh, member Baskin. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think that it would be helpful to have that or certainly to have the a list of suggestions that came up in the meeting, even if we haven't, because I think we've had a number of suggestions about public comment from various of us. And I don't think we've reached consensus on which ones we like maybe, but it would be great to have those sort of separated out in their own list as opposed to all the thinking behind them and the deliberating, just sort of the, the pure suggestions. That would be very helpful. Um, uh, Councilor Dwight? Um, you could take a straw poll at the end of actually each item that's discussed. Um, if it just, you know, the idea is if we have a rough consensus, then then there's, uh, that would tie the bow and it would also, it would probably okay. save time. So um, that, that, to think what that if, would if, look like. yeah. Well, for instance, um, well, yeah, I mean, Al had actually made, he had made what would have been considered a recommendation. He made a recommendation and if we wanted to vote on that recommendation or debate that recommendation, which right now this has been a fairly open conversation. I think we've identified that we, I think we all share the same objectives by and large. Um, it's how to achieve that. I mean, one of the biggest concerns is to limit time. However, we do that, either reduce the amount of time the speakers can speak or reduce the actual speaking period, or if we require people to sign up or speak only to the agenda items. But, you know, so let's figure out, so 
that's about time issue. Let's vote on that time issue or, or, or focus more narrowly on that. Right. Okay. Um, Vice Chair Simon. Yeah, I, I'm only going to add that we, we actually don't require consensus. Uh, it'd be wonderful if it's a five zero and everything we do, but uh, it is really only majority and I've, I've been on the winning side and I've been on the losing side and I'm, I'm sure that'll happen again. Um, but I do, I, I would hope for us to move along, right? So one of the things I got out of the, out of the, out of the discussion about public comment is the need to somehow put some limits. Um, I recommend a specific time limit. Other people suggest cutting back time or this or that. So we have some ideas that are out there. I'd love for us to decide which of those ideas we want to advance and then maybe move on to the next topic. Uh, Councilor Dwight. Okay. Uh, in that respect, then the one, the item, the means it seems the most equitable, at least addresses the concerns that everyone's spoken about, is to literally designate a time and hold to that. And that way it, and then require a sign up. It does mean that some, in, in some cases, at least in recent history, that a number of people will be eliminated, not be able to uh, participate because they didn't, they weren't first come first serve, which is essentially how that would work. Um, and, but at the same time, it is equitable because it's blind. It's not determining whether you have to live in Northampton or determining whether uh, what your opinion based on your opinion or anything. It's just if you got there on time, the only disqualifier is you were too late. So that seems the most fair, the most equitable, and as far as I can tell, um, you can start making different accommodations for, you know, if we start prioritizing who's from Northampton, who's speaking to the agenda item and so on and so forth, that's, that's uh, fine tuning. And I don't know if that's where we want to go, but I, I think I would recommend that we define a prescribed amount of time at the beginning of the meeting that is allotted for um, public comment. And then that's it. So I would say I should, you know, we'll keep a list of all the suggestions, uh, which is a great idea. And but if there's ones like that, that is, there seems to be uh, more clarity on, or for me, there's a lot of clarity on member Baskin's two minute rule. Uh, it, perhaps those are things we could more clearly define that, you know, as, as soon as possible. And then the ones that you were saying that need to be fine tuned, I'll, I'll try to, you know, keep a list of those so we don't, we hold on to them as we go on, but, but maybe we'll put those uh, to more to the back burner uh, and move on to other uh, topics. So um, I guess, Councillor Dwight, so, so voting, are, are we voting on su moving to suggest or moving to recommend or is that, what does that look like? Well, I don't know. I mean, does yeah. someone want to, does someone want to, how, how much time do you want to allow for public comment? Uh, Councillor Foster. Uh, I'm between an hour and a half and two hours. I'm hmm. not sure how others feel about that, but those are the sort of numbers and I'm, I'm thinking of. Hmm. I will point out that, you know, rules can be changed and I think it's great to try, try things and it's not, it's, if it doesn't work, if we're finding it's too much time or too little time, it, it's, um, it, it actually isn't that difficult, um, according to the rules, to change the rule, to amend the rules. Correct. Uh, anyway, uh, Member Baskin. Yeah, I like. Um, I think I would feel. I'm not sure I know about the amount of time yet because I think in part it depends on what other things we can do to reduce the length of the meeting, and this is where I think this is tied to the other topics is that. Public, reducing public comment length like is part of it, but I also think there's there's other extraneous stuff that happens in the meetings um, and ways that the meetings could be streamlined, um, like the second readings. Um, so that's one piece. Um, I do like setting a, a time limit though. Um, and I, I agree maybe an hour and a half to two hours might be the right amount. Um, I think I don't love the sign up beforehand. I think that that doesn't, I don't, I, I feel like what Councillor Foster said was important about 
people needing to be able to sort of witness comment and decide to speak. I, and I don't think that how early you get there is a particularly equitable measure of determine. I mean, I do, I like it. I guess my preference would be like an hour and a half to two hours, two minutes per person, no restriction on who the people are. Um, so no restriction based on residency. And I guess no, I, I'm still interested in restricting to the topics on the agenda, but I understand if there's other people don't want to do that. I think there's valid reasons not to do that. Um, at least most, mostly that it's harder to enforce. Um, so I don't know. Right. So we're going to, we can hold on to, you know, ones that we have, don't have clarity mm -hmm. on yet and, and maybe even make a meeting where we actually uh, formally put, you know, revisit those. Um, if mm -hmm. they're ones that we're not, some things I'm still, you know, I don't have a strong opinion personally on, and I'm kind of going to go back and read the minutes and, and evolve with it a little bit, but some do. I also want to remember Solicitor Seawald's excellent suggestion of not reading through hired documents. I'm very excited about voting on that one. Uh, um, uh, Vice Chair Simon and then Councilor Dwight. Yeah, I'm going to suggest to come back strictly to the issue of the total time that you want to allow for public comment. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pitch for one hour. Um, but I, I think this is an absolutely essential part on the issue of, of meeting time. Um, but I, I think we should try to resolve the issue of uh, length of public comment before we get into the rules of public comment. That's just a suggestion. Uh, yeah, Councilor Dwight. I agree. I think actually two hours, by the way, puts you at nine o'clock. Uh, started convening the meeting at nine o'clock, which, as we've argued, is not helpful. And, and as Council Labard said, our meetings that took us till three, the public comment went to nine thirty, uh, quarter to ten. So the fact is, is that one hour up front. And by the way, you can if there's only if no one shows up or if, you, if only one person comes to speak, you can convene the meeting right after that, regardless. Um, the other issue is is that we schedule all our hearings at seven o'clock which requires participants to show up at seven to have a public hearing. Now, poll petitions, you know, those people are paid a lot of money, I suppose, to sit there and watch our meetings till 9, 30, 10 o'clock. But the fact is, is that we, when we postpone, when there's hearings on other issues that are relevant to people in the public, and those meeting, those hearings don't start until, um, till much later, till nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, then that's problematic and that's not doing the business of the council. We are, uh, we are not doing what we should. So I agree with the one hour recommendation. I think that that actually, and as council Maori said that if it's up to the body to decide to suspend rules to allow for expanded public comment if they feel that's necessary. That's true, that's an option. Um, Member Baskin. I would just like to point out that I, since there's no reason explicitly that public comment needs to be outside of the meeting, as we discussed earlier, I would also be in favor of shifting the recommended agenda, which is also in the rules, um, so that public hearings happen before public comment, because I agree, there's no reason that people who are here for a specific public hearing should have to sit through two and a half hours of public comment, or two hours, or even an hour. Like, huh. I think it would be better to just put the public hearings up front then comment after the hearings. I think that would be much more efficient. Um, Vice Chair Simon. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, I just wanna add that, that one of the reasons why it's really important about when the public comment ends, which is what uh, Councilor Dwight was referring to starting nine o'clock is because under the current rules, and we'll get to this, um, new business is the 16th item on the agenda, 16th. So, I mean, we'll, that's another topic for very soon about how you can shorten your meetings. But if you're only beginning at nine and you've got 15 items to get through before the topic that people are talking about ever comes up for discussion, it just doesn't work. I will also throw out that I would like to have a discussion about the um, start time of meetings, which isn't on the agenda. So perhaps I shouldn't bring it up <laughs> um, because maybe even, you know, a half an hour earlier would, would be a, big difference between 11.30 or 12 ending. Um, yes, Councilor White. Well, um, actually to, to Al's 
most recent point, the, the fact is what we've done in the past, if, if there's a demonstrated uh, uh, level of interest that um, indicates that there's a particular item of interest that's coming late in the agenda, it is the presiding officer's precedence after appealing to the council to move that agenda item up. And that's what we've done in order to, I mean, in the interest of the people observing. It doesn't necessarily facilitate our process in any way, but it does. It does uh, allow people uh, at least some proximate time to their comments for us to vote, deliberate, and discuss. So, but that that's actually built in there. It's in so the council, in the uh, right. So, Councillor Dwight, when uh, so you can just move to suspend the rules to extend public comment if you have a kind of conservative amount of public comment limit, right? But you can you have to do that before public comment begins, correct? You you can't see a lot no, of interest. No. In it. Oh no. Okay. That's it. No no no. I mean it's the same thing. I mean we 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 moved to for instance when we had uh, a drop dead adjournment time. We didn't say ahead of time that we're going. This looks like a BP agenda that we're going to suspend rules at the end. You just as yeah. As it becomes as it becomes evident or uh, apparent, and then a two thirds majority has to approve. But yeah, you can do okay. it. It, it. But that would require, as uh, Member Baskin pointed out, it would have to be in the context of the meeting, a roll call, and we would have to be convened because we can't vote to suspend rules if we're not convened. So mm -hmm. we'd have to, it would have to be in the context of the meeting. To do that. So we would have to do roll call before public comment to be able to suspend the rules if we decide one of us decides to propose to. That's that's my understanding. It would have to be have to be the first item on the agenda. Well, I just want to point out we have 15 minutes towards my at least my goal uh, of ending at eight, and so and we, we need to come up with another um, priority topic. I'm, I'm open to staying a little longer, but I'm just trying to like have a goal. And so is there some, we wanna um, think about voting on uh, some low hanging fruit or what's the pleasure, um, Vice Chair Sy. We're very close here because we have two people in favor of an hour and a half to two hours for length of public comment. We have two people in favor of one hour. So, um, you're the tie-breaking vote, or you may have a different opinion entirely, in which case you should yeah. throw it out there. But we're pretty, actually pretty close to coming up with it. One answer, one recommendation. Right. So if we have, a, I personally would love to vote on the two minute, uh, but because part of it is I'm doing some math here. If you allow people two minutes, how many people can speak, you know, in what amount of time? Now, how many how many people are included in that? So if you're, um, does that make sense? If if, if public comment um, time period is less, then I would I would be more in, more inclined to, to say an hour because um, more people would be included than if you kept it at three minutes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so I I yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like I, think that, I think that makes sense. It's sort of um, sort of straw poll on where we're landing on yeah. length of each yeah. comment and total length of public comment. And I am willing to shift backwards from my two hours. I'd go back. I'd go back as far as an hour, um, especially with that understanding that if there is uh, a compelling reason, we could suspend the rules to to allow for more public comment and. Um, my initial thought was was more of a hard cutoff. Um, and so if we redo the agenda, and I'm, I'm also just want to say in support of Member Baskin's idea of those like poll petition hearings and, and those public hearings, putting them before public comment makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but anyway, so my shift has been back uh, to an hour um, and right. 10 minutes. I would support uh, at one hour and two minute uh, public comments just to be transparent. Uh, Solicitor Seawald. Can I express a little bit of discomfort with the idea of suspending rules to allow further public comment after the designated time ends? I'm not suggesting anyone on this call or anyone who's on the council would do this, but I don't want to get into a situation where the identity of the person who wants to speak or the anticipated statement that the person is going to make is going to be uh, in any way influencing the council on whether or not to suspend rules. 
And, you know, I think you're not in a, a, you know, two readings in one night rule suspension here. You're in the First Amendment territory here. So you have to be very careful not to open the door for considerations of content. Mm, that's a good point. Um, Member Baskin. I also do think I, I think part of what holds up the council is lots and lots of roll call votes at like what feels to me like an excessive number of roll call votes, which I know it's part of that's because it's remote participation and the open meeting law. Um, but I do think that the, I don't want to build a rule to be suspended. Like I think that that yeah. we should be building rules that don't need to be, I think suspension should be for exceptional circumstances, not as like a day-to-day -day thing. So my inclination would be to set a limit of an hour and a half, um, which is, you know, between an hour and two hours, I think is long enough that with a two minute limit, it should be very rare that there would be a desire to suspend. And, you know, I think a lot of the time it won't go to a full hour and a half, but I think that the, that would be my inclination to, it would be to leave it slightly longer so that we're not running into situations where there's a desire to suspend the rules. Uh, Vice Chair Simon. All right, I'm I'm going to throw out a motion here. Um, I'm going to I'm going to move that uh, the committee recommends to the council that um, public comment be limited uh, to one hour and two minutes per speaker. Second. Any discussion? I guess we've discussed, right? <laughs> Council Dwight? Um, on the issue of, of the suspension of rules, uh, and uh, actually I'm more concerned with Solicitor Seawall's point that he brought up, uh, uh, less so Member Baskin's because basically we're, th those suspension of rules would present themselves as, a, and, and it's up to the body to determine whether it's urgent or not, or whether it's exceptional or not. Um, the, and I agree with you, I don't think we should build rules to be suspended, but the fact is, is that that clause is in there for that very purpose to, to, to accommodate unanticipated circumstances. But I'm more concerned about the potential of the, cri the criteria by which you decide to suspend the rules. Um, if we have a sign up, then it's evident that someone could see or the council could see or whatever, who's coming next. And maybe that would influence your vote and there could be a, a, an issue there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in, in the case of the suspension of rules, I, 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 think it, I, I think it should be employed very rarely. And, and I would think, for instance, you know, one of the things that we used to caution people when, we, when um, there was a particularly controversial issue was, at least I preface, it wasn't a rule I prefaced and introduced and said, look, if you hear someone say the things that you are going to say, then you can please be happy with saying ditto. Or we prefer that you add new information, information that has not been heard, or just saying, I agree with this. But the, I mean, one of the things that we witnessed and experienced in the last year was the same thing over and over and over and over again. It was just an opportunity to, to pile on. And, and a lot of it was actually scripted to be just that. And, and as I said, that's rare and unique. That does not, that's not usually the case, but it is so... I don't think the necessity to suspend rules would come up that often. I really don't. Um, and, and it is again, up to the presiding officer just to make those recommendations. It should not be a rule that I just said, I think that should be just a recommendation. But the, the fact is that if we have a hard time, then the, then the public comes to this knowing that it's one hour and that's it. Um, they come to it knowing that they have three minutes right now and that's it. Now, most, 99.9% .9 of the people try to meet it. They don't, they, they don't always, as you say, that they do kind of start rambling like I am right now at the end of those three minutes. But I think if, if we have a hard prescribed time 
and a hard prescribed uh, amount of time for speaking that the public can accommodate that and we'll come to that. And it really probably the vast majority of time will not become an issue. Mm -hmm. but I would, my concern would be around topics that we know are going to have a lot of public comment around the budget or have been since I've been uh, uh, serving. And so, but that's something where we could ahead of time or could the, the council president decide ahead of time during budget season or, or whenever there's a topic that's obvi of obvious interest to add, you know, to make it, a, to extend it to a two hour? Is that kosher? Yeah. Uh, if I may, the, the, the budget discussion is under the context of a hearing. That's right. actually, what, as, oh, as, as Solicitor Seawall pointed out, it's in a budget hearing. It's more, it's more open. Um, at the same time, when we're deliberating on the budget, and this is what happened here, people participated in the budget hearing, and then they participated in the same way, in the same context with the same issues at, at the meetings in public comment. And, and you know, it's a distinction for them that they're probably not aware of. It's a distinction that we are aware of. There is a, there's different, there's a difference between participating in a hearing and providing public comment. And so in, in that respect, that opportunity is afforded to the public with expanded uh, testimony on issues relative to the budget and budgetary items. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Foster? I was, I was gonna say exactly that, that the public, um, especially in the public. Oh, are you, are you, uh, you muted? Sorry, I thought I had unmuted. I was gonna say exactly what Councillor Dwight said, that some of those hot topics actually were public hearings um, where public participation wasn't limited by the rule we're discussing. I, I will just add that um, I, I'm not totally sure how long co public comment will, should be, um, to be honest. I'm tempted to go to, for an hour because we can vote to, you know, as a, as a new council to, to extend it, because I, I'm just wondering, um, you know, if we can make these meetings super efficient with, without sacrificing, obviously, um, accessibility and, and equity. I think it's worth trying and seeing how that feels. Um, sometimes it's hard to get perspective when you've had it be so open-ended, but I do have, I do have a little discomfort. You know, I do, I do wonder, and you know, it, um, frankly, during our meetings, I'm not always watching how long public comment it has a lot to do with what kind of day I've had, how long public comment is feeling. So I don't really have a, I will just, I'll just be honest. I don't have a clear grasp on how much, you know, how long, but I would, I guess on, in this case, I would vote for this motion because I would err on the side of trying something kind of uh, new and more, whatever that is, conservative or more efficient, you know, more toward time management. Um, and then if it feels like we're really, you know, uh, you know, cutting, uh, cutting people out, then I would uh, happily amend that, you know, within a few meetings or whatever. So that's why I would be supporting this motion. All the question. Uh, any more comment on any more? Uh, all right, should we? Uh, oh, what'd you say, Vice Chair Simon? Did you have a question? The question, you have to go right to the vote. He called the question. There's oh, no oh, debate. I called the no, question. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, oh, I yes. didn't hear. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So, a uh, roll call, Laura. Um, Councillor Mayori. Yes. Uh, Member Simon. Yes. Member Baskin. No. Member Dwight. Yes. And member Foster. Yes. Uh, so right, that passes with one. Yeah, I was gonna, that passes on, on first and only reading. Any other? Yes, Councillor yeah. Foster. Oh, um, move. Uh, yeah, move um, a two minute time limit on public comments. I think that was included in the motion. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Excuse me, Member Simon, I just caught the, the one hour limit. Councillor LaBarge. Uh, yes, could you just repeat that whole motion now? 
Yeah, we voted and, and the motion passed to uh, recommend uh, public comment be limited to one hour and two minutes each commenter. That's great. Thank you. Let's see. Is there any other motions we want to try tonight? Well, the, the question is, do we want to continue or should we this rest of the agenda just work on setting up a meeting? Oh, oh, Laura, did you have something that you had to? Oh, I was just going to say we don't have a next meeting scheduled. Right. No. Right. I just wanted to make sure we weren't. Uh, no, no more. I'm. I'm really looking forward to on, uh, on getting rid of reading aloud all documents, but we can do that. We can put that on the on the agenda. That's my personal thing. Um, so yes, I guess we've done some good work here. So do um, we want to move on to? Uh, we need to come up with another date and identify any new topics, unless someone has another motion. Okay, uh, so meeting dates, we had said, I believe we said once a month, is that correct? Is that, so that would make us. Uh, I, I wasn't sure that that was everyone's understanding. Right, okay. I just don't, I'm trying to remember. Well, what, what, are, what are opinions on, um, meeting frequency or next meeting, July, August, okay. Oh, uh, Member Paskin. I think it would make some sense to be twice a month, um, just because I think it will let us move through it a little faster and I'd rather not have a bottleneck at the end and need to meet more frequently later. I have more time now than I will in a couple months. Uh, Member Simon, uh, uh, Vice Chair Simon. Yeah, I, I agree. I'd like us to try to go every two weeks. I mean, if it took us two hours on one topic, um, you know, hopefully we'll we'll streamline our meetings. But I I think we should really move along because I, I actually don't know how many topics we're going to end up considering. Right, since we'll be adding some as we go along. Council um, White. This one was exceptional. This is one of is probably the primary topic of conversation, and I would, don't imagine the other ones be um, so involved. But maybe uh, the fact is, um, there, some of us are going away for the summer. I guess some periods of the summer. So I don't know. There may be that maybe this is why it's problematic to have meetings in the summer. But um, meeting twice. So if we met again, I won't be around. I mean, I can try and do it remotely, but I have no idea where I'm going or if it'll have Wi-Fi or not. It didn't two years ago, but maybe maybe they've gotten Wi-Fi since. But um, so you, it's a challenge for me personally, but um, I can probably make accommodations, go drive to some parking lot somewhere and do it. But, um, yeah. Point, when, uh, when, is, when is kind of a time you think you could meet in uh i guess in august well if we're talking august then fine i mean i'm well, talking I mean, about like, if we're having another meeting this month right, in it's July. Gonna be a little tricky. so you're yeah. saying you don't have you yeah you, you're, you're not sure about another time in july so yeah two weeks yeah. from today is the 27th you're saying you don't know that, that that's going to be doable for you right i'm gonna i will be away then so when, is the, if, when but, is the soonest you kind of feel confident about making a meeting time I mean, uh, well, August third is my wedding anniversary. I just Aww. saw, but I mean, that's that's what. <laughs> we are not uh, doing that, my... Delida. Okay, she just scowled at me. Um, yeah, uh, so it looks like the tenth is probably. Or we could, uh, yeah, or we could move yeah. it. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was going to say, you know, I don't know. It might get too complicated if we move it to like the fourth on Wednesday looking at my schedule i could do something like that but i don't know if moving the the, the day you know is too confusing i would i would propose if not august 4 then if everyone unless someone has another suggestion uh vice chair simon uh unmute please sorry you're saying the week of july 26 is no good well, uh, Councilor Dwight, yes, for Councilor Dwight, that does not work. Next week? Uh, uh, well, it's, I'm going away for two weeks, so there's the rub. That's the thing. Well, here's the thing. I mean, yeah. we can, you know, we could do this now, and we could 
we, we could also then we could revisit the idea of you know every two weeks. We don't have to. You can also could, you can also convene without me, just <gasps> not for nothing. So that's a possibility too. That'll cut down on your time substantially. So the first week of August. What was the issue with this? Uh, well, we we're saying a wet, it would be it would be in Wednesday, August fourth, not Tuesday. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Foster. Here we are. The summertime. Um, I am oh, going to okay. be away um, the first three days of the first week of August. Okay. Let me just see what that is. So I'll, I'll be, be traveling home then, so I wouldn't be able right. to join in remotely. Right. So yeah. that's a, that's and we have a council meeting on the fifth, correct? Yeah, August fifth. Oh, no. Oh, it's, oh, I, oh, it's so funny. Oh, good. You know, that's funny. That happens where my calendar puts it on and does it correct for the summer. Okay, that's, well, do we want to try for that Thursday? August 5, possibility. Uh, August 5, how's that sound for any? Okay, August 5, how is 6 working for people? Okay. All right, so August 5 uh, at 6 p.m. And we will never to meet more frequently for a while. I, I, you know, that I, you know, when we, you know, given our schedules, because I, I do think it would, it would feel better to get, um, to get a big start, and then we can always slow down if it's too much for folks. Um, so, uh, okay, uh, so August 5 at 6 p.m. Any other motions? I, I would entertain another motion unless, oh, identify new, excuse me, identify new topics. Is that something that's on our agenda? Um, Member Baskin. Yeah, I would love to, um, to discuss the agenda of meetings, the sort of the rule that talks about the order that things happen in and all the many things that are supposed to happen. That goes with length of meeting and end time of meetings, but I think it should be enumerated as its own thing, probably. Okay, so, um, so order of agenda, basically, order of agenda items. Thank you. Anyone else right now? You can always contact me, um, Vice Chair Simon. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Is I've got actually several items, and I will contact you. Actually, I'll send it. I'll send um, an email to the whole committee so you can see. Uh, I'm not sure you should do that. No, I, don't do that. Yeah, Please don't send do that. it to Laura. <laughs> Everything should go through Laura. Send right. it to Laura, and Laura will work with with the chair. She's Is she committee. the entire uh, committee. She can she can share she can share yes. uh, the entire committee yes. Okay. Can you explain what the problem is with that? Once you can make a list of the topics that you want, but the best practice is to have a central location to filter everything through because um, you know I, I'm not saying you're going to do this, but the, what happens is I think we should talk about this part of the rules because, and you have now violated the open meeting law because you are stating your opinion to a quorum of the board of, of the committee on a matter that's both before the committee. Okay, so the, the best practice is, and if you want to send it to everybody, I'm just telling you what you can. If you want to make a list and send it, fine. But it, the best practice is to clear, have a, a central point to clear it through somebody who's not on the board, usually the person who's um, assisting the board and will do the distribution. And there should never be a reply all to that distribution. It's just the cleanest way to avoid any inadvertent open meeting law violations. Yes. And that's the way we do all of our, uh, um, our committees. We try anyway. Okay, is there a motion on the floor? I move that we adjourn. Second. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you, Solicitor Small. Thank you. I think we have to vote. We actually have to oh, vote sorry. on that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> yes, roll call. Yes, yes. <laughs> Member Simon. Uh, yes. Member Baskin. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Foster. <laughs> yes.